Good day everybody, this is the Ecclesiarch here, back with some more Horus Heresy Legions, and today I'm going to be showcasing some more fan-made content, and oh my god, is this a spicy one. So this is basically the Imperialis Armada uh, from Old Man Bob, and apart from just making the cards, this guy has also made some very cool mechanics that I want to show you. So before we <clears throat> dive into it, let's just take a look at the rules and explanations that he has sent because there are some new keywords and stuff that we need to discuss so first off there's the maneuver a card with this special rule may be played during your opponent's turn in response to a specific trigger energy must be spent still be spent as usual so actually funny enough i've had a couple of players voice this in general that they would like to see uh something being possible to play be played on the enemy turn now that's of course going to be a little hard to balance so once we take a look at the maneuver cards maybe we can uh get an idea of how uh op or not that is now there's also the altitude a unit with this trait may only be targeted for attacks by a unit with unstoppable trait this trait is lost upon act acting so basically this is like the fly trait uh in warp forge but instead of um having to use the ranged attack or be a fly unit themselves uh, yourself you need to be an unstoppable unit to basically attack it which i guess kind of makes sense because they the unstoppable ones usually have wings or jetpack right but in order to balance it out a little bit this trade is also lost upon acting so that's actually a very nice touch which means that you cannot just permanently abuse it and finally there's the ship module accessible through the ship builder the class of ship chosen will allow for a number of ship modules to be taken divided into three categories command armory cogitator or cogitator uh, these are uh, additional cars that form a side hand they have powerful effects that cost reactor rather than energy and unlike other tactics or cards in your hand they cannot be uh, interacted with however each ship module has a rechargeable value after using a module, it goes on a recharge for a number of friendly turns equal to this value. It cannot be used again until this time is up. Okay, so essentially uh, you get some extra stuff based on uh, what you choose in the ship builder. And yes, he has also made a ship builder just like there's a Titan builder. There's also a ship builder now for <clears throat> the Imperialist Armada. And I think we'll take a look at that in a moment. But first, let's take a look at the in-game screenshot. So this is uh, what he uh, has here. And to the right, you can see there's like stuff here, right? Macro cannons, uh, plasma drives, and a sturdy strike force. So those are basically modules. And that's something that you can, I guess, uh, use for reactor or gives you some passive uh, bonuses. I guess we're going to find out in a moment. But... Certainly a very interesting, uh, certainly a very, very interesting thing. Now, I think it's better if we uh, start from the vessels to take a look at the ships themselves. So there's basically three uh, ships that you can choose from. So number one is the Odysseus class war galley. And as you can see here, you can you can basically see who you've chosen as a captain uh, for the ship. And I guess there's like some stuff that kind of changes uh, based on that. So uh, you can choose the officer's quarters, astropath uh, cavern, gunnery officer. So basically you choose the command, right? Then you can choose the armory, like drop assault bay, imperialist armada, macro cannons, and cogit uh, cogitators here, uh, really queer cogitators, CRR bay, and plasma drives. So we're going to find out find that out in modules. I believe so let's take a look at the retribution class battleship so in the retribution class battleship you can choose the astartes uh, strike force for example gunnery officer void shields plasma drives so a lot of interesting stuff for sure and then there's the tetsujin uh, tetsujin class cruiser uh, which has less options because as we understand it's a smaller one so <clears throat> However, take a look at this. Start with a random Imperials Armada infantry in your hand. So basically, unlike the other ships, which are bigger and have more options, this has less options. However, it does give you a special ability. So very, very interesting stuff over there. Uh, let's actually take a look at the modules now. I think that's uh, where we should go next. And then we will take a look at the... Um, 
then we will get, take a look at the uh, warlords themselves, right? So uh, for the modules, let's take a look at what he has made. So Astartes Strike Force. So this has recharge too. So basically, uh, as I understand, this can be uh, used after when you use it after like two turns. And this is free reactor siege. Put in play an Astartes kill team and give it drop pod. So Astartes kill team is probably a troop that uh, is um, unique to this faction. So basically, it allows you to drop a unit for three reactor. That's pretty friggin' powerful. Then we have the Astropath Cavern, which is um, recharge two once again, and you give Sentinel to the enemy Warlord until your next turn. Yeah, this is a pretty cool one because mm, this allows you to slow down the enemy Warlord for one turn. CRR Bay. Uh, <coughs> what is this? Until your turn, gain one reactor when a friendly infantry or a Stardis dies. So basically, uh, you want to activate this. <clears throat> you want to activate this. I activate this basically uh, when you need to recharge your reactor and gain a lot of energy. Plus, it also has a passive reactor too. So even though it doesn't have a powerful ability, uh, it does allow you to gain a lot of uh, reactor. So that's more of a resource generation thing. We got the drop assault bay, recharge one. The next infantry troop you put in play gains drop pod. Okay, yeah, that's a small little uh, bonus. Obviously, you want to give uh, give like a little more health and survivability to your troop with recharge one. So once again, a very simple yet effective ability. And you also have deal two damage to a random enemy with a recharge of one. Now, this is pretty powerful because like uh, every other turn doing this, yikes. It's going to be pretty strong. And uh, Grand Admiral. <laughs> okay. Legendary. Recharge 3. Fully heal a friendly troop and give it 2 plus 2. <coughs> so, this is really... This is pretty good. This is not that powerful, but it's certainly a pretty good thing. I think this is like... Funny enough, I think this is weaker than um, Flak Turrets. Because being able to constantly dish out to damage is uh, stronger than being able to buff a unit, in my opinion. I would even... I think I would put the flak turrets on the legendary. Okay, gunnery officer, right? Recharge 3. Reveal a card in your op opponent's hand. If it's a tactic, deal 4 damage to the enemy warlord. If it's a troop, deal 2 damage to all enemies. Yeah, this is really, really good. And it had a recharge 3, obviously, because it's such a powerful uh, thingy. Then we have the Imperialis Armada Breachers. Recharge 1. Create an armada infantry in your hand. It costs one less. Yeah, this is really strong because, once again, it's for the extra resource. So, <clears throat> uh, since it doesn't say random, that means you get to choose from three, I guess. So, it, this is going to be very, very strong because it's constantly going to give you resources since the recharge one is... Um, very low. So land strike, recharge two, siege, uh, deal five damage, ordinance two. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. You probably want to get this if there is a vehicle meta <clears throat> or a titan meta or something. This is definitely going to be a very useful thing. Then we have macro cannons, recharge three, deal four damage to an enemy, stun the adjacent units. Ooh, ooh, that's a very powerful one as well. There are actually so many good choices. It's very hard to choose from how you would customize your ship. So then we got officer's quarters. Uh, give survivor to and front line to a friendly troop. That's also pretty nice, actually. And I think we're gonna, gonna get a better idea of how good these things are once we see the troops. Then we have the plasma drives. I, I remember this was the one in the screenshot. Recharge one, and for two energy, you can gain two. Ah, so two reactor, not re reactor, plasma. Ooh, this is pretty interesting. So this is one of your energy generation things. However, uh, here's the question. Why would I ever get this if I could get this? I guess because not... Uh, I guess because this uh, goal, this kind of takes the place of something more important. Actually, let's, let, let's take a look at the ship. So Plasma Drive and Ast uh, Astropath Covern, right? No, not Astropath Covern. CRR Bay. I, I want to actually take a look at well, which ships have that. Plasma Drives and CRR Bay. Yeah, actually, this is a question. Why would I want to get Plasma Drives instead of CRR Bay? Because 
Isn't it like... Am I missing something here, people? Because this automatically has reactor too, and as you use the ability... Hmm... Yeah, this is a little weird for me, honestly, like... I don't get why I, I would ever choose this over that, because this already passively gives you reactor, and also has an active ability on top, while plasma drives does not. Wait a minute. Let's take a look at the other ship. Oh, okay, I see what the, the point is, because Retribution class battleship does not have the CRR bay, right? So, you, but the Tetsujin class cruiser has the CRR bay. The only problem I have with this is that with Odysseus class war galley, I would never choose plasma drives over CRR bay, because CRR bay is strictly better. I like the idea that some ships get the better version and some ships don't. However, I think I would never choose uh this over that so uh ooh, okay so this is cyhanium predictus cyhanium recharge two choose a card in the enemy's hand if it's played before your next turn gain four energy oh for uh, plasma this is pretty interesting so yeah this is something that you used to predict predict um this is like malkador's ability and you can use it to gain uh two plasma so yeah why not a little bit of a fun thing uh really query cogitators um recharge one the first card played by your opponent next turn costs one more yeah, this could also be pretty good to slow down the enemy tempo certainly a good thing void shields uh give shield to all friendly units and recharge three and also has a reactor one oh i want to check another thing in the vessels and xiphon launch bay siege Deal three damage to a random enemy twice. Also pretty good because once again recharge one. These uh, cards with recharge one are extremely powerful. Uh, let me let me actually check something here. So this doesn't have the predictus. Uh, let's take a look at this. Ah, okay. Oh, oh, all right. Now this is very good. This is very good. So <clears throat> you essentially get to choose. Do you want the Void Shields that also grant you shield but a little bit of Plasma? The Plasma Drives or the Sacneo Predictors? I think the Retribution class uh, battleship is actually quite well designed in terms of this because you get you get to... You can either play the guessing game. Uh, you can either get the smaller reactor with a lot of shield or you can go with the balanced option. While with this... You got the CRR Bay, which is, I think, strictly better than Plasma Drive. But what was the Reliquary uh, Cogitator again? This is pretty hard to remember, actually. <laughs> There's so much stuff. Relique Reliquary Cogitator. This first color. Yeah, yeah, oh, I see. So, basically, you can sacrifice your Plasma Generation for uh, the ability to delay enemy tempo. Uh, that's also pretty interesting, for sure. Okay. So, that gives us the ability to customize our ships a lot. So what would I choose? Which vessel would I go for? Actually, before deciding that, let's take a look at the Warlords. So these are our captains that we can choose for the ship. And uh, <clears throat> we can basically uh, base our game plan on that. So let's start from the Ace, which already looks pretty funny. <laughs> Who's that? That looks like looks like some actor that I know. Anyway, what a guy. <laughs> okay, so this is their... Um, epic Warlord of 35 HP with high initiative and Reactor 1, start with a maneuver in your hand and create an Imperialist Armada vehicle in your hand. Okay, so what? Maneuver in your hand? Wait, what was maneuver again? Sorry guys that I'm jumping around because I'm with a special maybe played during your... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The one that you play on the opponent's turn. Pretty cool. So you get an extra maneuver, and you can create vehicles in your hand. Okay, a pretty cool uh, dude, for sure. Archduke uh, Admiral Hesia. Oh, he looks pretty epic. Savage, give Bastion 2 to adjacent units. Ooh, that's pretty sick. So it's like uh, double stalwart defenders when you attack. So... This gives two health to anything you put into play. This is pretty broken. <laughs> this is pretty broken. Especially because it's savage. Okay, so Athene Ducade. Well, she looks pretty awesome, for sure. 
uh, Void Mistress of the Blood Angels. So Reactor 1 and draw a card if it is a tactic. Return it to your deck. Requiem and Backlash. Backlash? Oh, your troop with the highest attack. Attack once. Sick. So basically, she's got a card draw for one energy, but if it's a tactic, it's going to get lost and return it to your deck. She does have the Reactor 1, but at the same time, she's got a pretty sick Requiem. So if she has like a very powerful unit on the board and you basically take her out, she has a final, like she can do that final punch at, you, at your Warlord because this is definitely going to go face if possible. So you got to be very, very careful when dealing with this one. And here's the Legendary one. Lord Admiral, uh, Bright on Semper, Semper's Last Stand, Reactor 1, choose an Imperialist Army Tactic, and add it to your hand, next time choose a troop. So, Tactic Troop, Tactic Troop, I definitely love the idea of uh, him alternating between tactic, Tactics and Troops, that makes it more interesting, so... Uh, what is this? Semper Defiant, whenever you... So, oh, so this is his transformation. Let's first see how he triggers his transformation. So... Lord Admiral Brighton Semper becomes defiant for the Emperor. Reduce this card cost by one if your Warlord was damaged in the same turn as a friendly troop was destroyed. So basically, if he attacks when a unit is destroyed, he your unit is destroyed, you, you reduce it by one. So not too difficult to get. And whenever you play an Imperialist Armada troop or tactic with an energy cost, uh, create a card uh, of the other type from the same faction in your hand. It costs zero. So if you play a tactic, you create a troop and cost zero. If you play, play a troop, you create a tactic and cost zero. This is a very, very good design because it's uh, very reminiscent of uh, uh, his base form. So this is this is literally an upgraded version of his base, fo base form, which is a <laughs> base form, which is really good because... Honestly speaking, I think that uh I think that it's always good when the reckoning makes sense like that. It kind of connected to uh the base form in some way. And finally we have a part of Hood, the tra rogue trader of the Eastern Fringe. This is the 30 HP warlord. It has reactor 2 though and deal 2 damage if the target Oh no, okay. So deal 2 damage if the target dies gain reactor 2. So this is like the Garviel Loken um mm of this faction okay honestly speaking there's so many choices i think that archduke is kind of overpowered though because we have seen many times how strong it is when when you can give adjacent units hp while when attacking so he's basically the better cargos at this point even though he does not have the active ability uh he has 35 hp and bastion 2 is a little bit too much i think but i especially like um, Brighton Semper and Athen Ducade. They're definitely my favorites for sure. Okay, uh, let's take a look at some of the tactics that these guys have. <coughs> let's see if there's other ways to also generate a uh, reactor. First of all, because that's going to decide a lot of things, you know, uh, based on whether or not you want that CRR bay or whatever on your ship. So Aces in Exile, Return 3. Uh, Imperialis Armada Vehicle that have died this game to your... Ah, okay, return three Imperialis Armada Vehicle that have died this game to your deck. Reduce their cost by zero, draw a card. Now, this is not bad at all. Uh, a little bit costy, but it does draw you a card. It does add three vehicles that you know what vehicles they're going to be to your deck for zero. So, this could be okay. Aggressive solutions, draw two troops from your deck and give them flank. If they already have flank, give them fast. Holy hell. Yeah, this is really good. This is really, really good. This is like the better version of the World Eater uh, draw, but for higher cost. So that's also something that we should definitely keep in mind. Always prepared. Create a random maneuver in your hand. All right. So just a random tactic generator. Arvus Extract. Zero, return a friendly troop to your hand and give it drop pod. Eh, I usually don't like drop pod cards, to be honest. Breach head assault. Infantry in your hand gain courage. Put in play a copy of this troop. So wait, so you lose uh, quite a bit of tempo, but it does then give you an ability to regain the tempo. So one copy of this could certainly be pretty interesting. 
Bombing run. Deal two damage to a random enemy four times. Cost one less for each module currently recharging. So if you could have three rechargeable modules, you could have four energy deal eight damage. Ouch. That could be pretty sick, but obviously uh, it would have like a tactical requirement for you to just blow all your uh, modules there. Broken trust with reflection. Create a forbidden protocols in your hand. Reduce its cost by one. Oh my god, I love this. So for the so he's trying to push a vehicle build really hard, and I like it. And you'd probably play that with the ace. Okay, command center. Your warlord gains reactor one. I don't know how to feel about this one because actually, to be fair. Uh, the knights have the same card for 4 energy. That's one of the things that kind of make me skeptical about this. But we have to also remember that knights have the ability to systematically keep using their uh, reactor. So there's that, obviously. Their plasma. Uh, dogfight. Deal 2 damage to an enemy. Deal an additional 3 damage if it has unstoppable. So this is kind of like the counter to their counter. So with flying units, um, as we know, with altitude, uh, they're kind of uh, forced to include unstoppable to deal with you and you punish them for having unstoppable. This is pretty good. Frantic flares, give precognition and ward to a friendly vehicle until your next turn. It's good that this is until your next turn, else it would be crazy to make it invulnerable. So you get the chance to build a very big vehicle. You drop it, you buff it, and then you slap maybe three forbidden protocols on it which you generate through the um mm, reflection oh i love the art on this one internal affairs he actually chooses the art so well your warlord gains altitude until your next turn <coughs> draw a card i love this this is a very good defensive option while also not making you invulnerable or anything stupid so this is a condition that your opponent has to go around and you also draw a card super card and there's our first legendary tactic, 8 energy. Put in play 2 orbital plates and give them ward. So I still don't know what's an orbital plate. I don't know what's the uh, Arsardi strike force. So once we see those cards, we will know how strong this is. So kinetic strike, give friendly true vehicle, terror and cleave too. So once again, very big support for the vehicles. Uncoming barrage, deal 3 damage to the enemy unit with the lowest health. If it dies, repeat this effect, ordinance 2. Oh, very interesting one for sure. So you can clear the board with this. Uh, let's say uh, there's like um, Heart of Caliban or something coming. Ooh, Phosphex Bombardment. Deal two damage to all enemies for each unit kill. Give poison one to all other enemy units. Ouch. So uh, once again, if defenders of uh, Caliban play the Heart, you use this and you give poison five to Luther or whoever is going to be. That's scary as hell. Raise shields. Give Bastion four and shield to your Warlord. This is a very good defensive tool for sure, very cheap. I think it's either e even too strong for what it does. Four health and a shield is a lot, but yeah, why not? Why they're they're like allowed to have strong cards, right? So certainly something really cool. Um okay, so now we have the raid resup rapid resupply. Reduce the cost of all vehicles in your deck with other flank and fast by one. What what what? Oh, okay, with either flank or fast by one and draw you know, one card. Okay, so, yeah, this is, like, something that a lot of factions get. This is, like, a, an ability to just uh, skip a turn and make everything cheaper. Revelation in pain. Okay, destroy an enemy troop, gain plasma equal to its energy cost. Very good execution card, for sure. Synergizes very well. Ripple Bombardment would deal one damage to all enemies in Ordinance 2. Okay, this is nice. Rushed deployment. Put in play two infantry troops from your hand that cost six or less. Stun them. Oh, this is so cool. So basically, you're you're uh, doing like a mini desperate defense, but you also stun them. So if they have some beefy frontline units, this could actually be pretty interesting. I like this design a lot. Uh, okay, the next legendary, the sanctioned operation. 5 energy. Your warlord gains plus 2, plus 1 to friendly vehicles put in play if they have flank or fast. So once again, great vehicle support. Saturation fire, deal 1 damage to all enemies and give them can't attack. Very good card. 
Sector Sweep, gain one plasma for every friendly unit and enemy unit. So you could have just said for every unit, man. <laughs> okay, pretty cool. And finally, we have a vehicle. Was this supposed to be here? Uh, I think he misplaced this because this was supposed to be in the units, but... You know what, let's take a look. So 10 energy, 115 altitude, can't attack and deal 2 damage to all enemies. And deals 3 damage to enemy warlord for reactor. This is a very spicy card. I like things like that because it's very low attack, but it provides a constant big bonus. And it's un impossible to take it out without hard removal. This is a proper 10 energy card. I, I really like stuff like this but let's now take a look at uh the troops by the way i i hope we get we see some maneuvers here because i kind of got stuck in the terms of maneuvers we we haven't seen any maneuvers yet so anyway so let's take a look at the troops uh huh so apis starcraft altitude two energy gain uh two reactor so three and oh yeah this is pretty good so this has quite a bit of survival because of the altitude so you will be able to generate that extra reactor if you want but the stats are pretty shit so it might be a little too too might be too little for what it does aquila recon altitude once again unstoppable relentless draw a car yeah this is pretty good you drop this the enemy has difficulty taking it out it's going to draw you a card while also leaving a body which is a vehicle so don't forget that, guys, because vehicles for this faction are extra strong. Uh, Astarte skill team. Okay, so this is the one. Uh, four energy, five, five. When put in play, gains two random bonuses. Ooh, so this is like... It can gain bloodthirst and stuff like that as well. So when you keep dropping Astarte skill teams from your vessel ability, this might be really powerful. And yeah, it's a purple card, as you can see. So you cannot include this in your deck. So this is only... You can only summon this. Okay, so Baharat class automata. So four energy, four three reactor one berserk bloodthirst. A little bit on the weak, bit on the weak side because of that uh, health. But yeah, I guess that's why we have drop pod because if you drop this with uh, together with a drop pod, then you can get some interesting things into play for sure. Blue Zephyr, the legendary. Ah, uh, okay. <clears throat> so this is fast and resolution gain altitude. Oh my god. It also was supposed to have battle honor, I guess, or he just messed it up instead of metal resolution. This is really powerful. This is like the Raven. On top of that, don't forget just how many support we have for how much support we have for fast and flank vehicles. This is gonna be nuts. This is like properly overpowered because... It's the Raven that also gains altitude. So you're kind of unable to take it out unless you have a proper setup. I think this is a little bit too strong. Decoy Drone. Your Warlord gains Precognition. So they have like... Your world has Precognition. So they have some pretty good um, v uh, Warlord defense support as well, which is pretty cool. Drop Pylon. So 5 energy, 1, 7. Can't attack, drop pod, landing, gain 4 reactor, reactor 1. So this is just a source of plasma so epsilon six automata reactor one savage gain reactor one battle honor heal two this is pretty cool unit now this is something that is very interesting because the more you buff it the more interesting it gets the more reactor it uh, generates the longer it survives i like it you could really abuse this with forbidden protocols and stuff like that Faustus Interceptor, flank, battle honor, return to your hand and reduce the cost by three. Now, this is already a little bit of a problem, man, because we had this um, card that gave flank units fast, right? So if you get, get this, you essentially have a chance, if you get lucky, to draw two of these, have 12 total damage from fast, and then also get, get this guy which also has fast, so a little bit toxic over there. Uh, Flaxman Squad, put in play two Flaxman Squad. Oh, so this is like the... Uh, this is like the, what's called again? 
human shields or whatever it's called, but a better version. Fury Interceptor, once again, a fast unit streak, create a Fury Interceptor in your hand. This can be pretty scary, pretty uh, toxic as well, but I do still like the design, it's pretty cool. Uh, Gene Enhanced Partisan. Reactor 2, when a, tr when a troop is destroyed, heal 3 and refill... Gain, heal 3 and refill 2 energy. So I think when a troop is destroyed, you heal 3 and refill 2, but... Does your Warlord heal, or does this unit heal? I think this unit heals, and it refills two energy. So this is like the uh, thing that the Titans have, that they can drop, and when the enemy units get taken out, it just refills your energy. So, Hotshot Pilot. 5-5-5. Five, five, five. I, like I like the names on some of these things. Rally, give altitude to a friendly vehicle. Very cool thing, for sure. So you play an altitude card, then you play this to give it altitude again. So indentured workers, two energy, one, three reactor, pay, pack, gain one. This is way better than any other reactor generators that we had so far, because think about it. You can instantly gain uh, this, uh, like one plasma at least, by just attacking, and it also gets a reactor. So pretty cool. Uh, Jackal Gunship, so once again, fast, man, there are too many fast units in your thingy, you can just, uh, you can just obliterate the enemy warlord without a problem, I think you need to give these things flank, and, um, your fast unit should totally get flank, only Blue Zephyr maybe should have fast, and everything else is gonna have a chance to gain fast anyway if they're drawn through the card. Kinetic Harvester, Reactor 3, Battle Honor, gain a vulnerable until your next turn. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Probably on the weak side, not going to be played much, but a cool design. Master of Arms. Ooh, okay, so deal two damage, ordinance three. If the target dies, add a random maneuver to your hand. Once again, until I see the maneuvers, I cannot say how strong this is. Master of Etherics, eight energy, nine, six, altitude. Oh, interesting. So we have an infantry with an altitude. That's pretty cool for sure. Master of Ordinance also looks really cool. Ordinance 1, Relentless, create a ripple bombardment in your hand. What was a ripple bombardment again? Ah, it was the AoE, yeah. Pretty cool one. Now we have the Legendary Infantry, Navis Petronova. Altitude, create a copy of each maneuver in your hand. That is very, very cool, because imagine you, this is going to give you just so many resources. Like, that's very cool. There's another legendary, the Choir Master of Telepathica, Relentless Trigger Discord. What? Oh my god. <laughs> what? And it's supposed to have altitude. <laughs> so your Discord starts your Discord starts giving you notifications, I guess. <laughs> okay. Orbital plate. Yeah, this was the thing that was summoned through the legendary tactic. Can't attack frontline and it attacks the target friendly unit. Hit this troop instead. This is a proper um this is a proper uh defense card because even unstoppable doesn't go through it. So certainly a pretty cool one. So for I think the tactic was to summon this for eight energy. Might be a little bit too strong because it's very powerful to summon for only eight energy, two of these things. Wait, let me let me double check that. Yeah, 8 energy and gives it ward too. Yeah, this is a little bit too much, I think. What do you guys think, actually? Tell me in the comments. But I think it's too much to summon two of these and give them ward. Uh, Racial Vought. <coughs> Rally, reduce the current recharge cooldown of all current modules by one. Very, very good. Very, very good. Rogue Trader Mercenaries, when you use a module card, this troop gains 2 plus 1. Very cool, once again. I love the module synergy. Security Battalion, land, create a security battalion in your hand. Fair enough. Landing, Starhawk Bomber, Altitude, Unstoppable, Cleave Ordinance. Yeah, still pretty pretty solid because of the altitude. The Viento Volley, can't attack, resolution, deal 2 damage to a random enemy, Ordinance 2. This is really nice because as soon as you drop it at the end of the turn, this is going to deal the damage. Viratir Hux, Reactor 3 and Stealth. Yeah, this is also pretty good, just a reactor generator, but once again, I think I prefer the uh, workers over everything else. Void Cascade, can't attack reactor, gain reactor 2, and give enemy warlord 
maintenance one until your next turn oh yeah this is pretty annoying this is something that is going to be cancer void warden reduce the current cooldown of a ship module by one so we got a lot of stuff that can actually reduce the cooldown of the module which is really cool uh void Se a sealed sentinel pretty good three energy three two shield is really nice especially when you can regain shield every single time voidsman squad battle honor gain shield this is not that good this is like way better void whisperer altitude reactor remove stealth okay so the anti-stealth card oh and it even removes precognition ward and duplicitous from all enemies so yeah pretty powerful pretty powerful especially considering it can stick around for a turn void officer tearing mass to gain for uh just gains um, two reactor this is a little bit weak plasma i mean and warrant officer this really and relentless draw a troop and reduce its cost by two this might actually be pretty all right okay so where do i find the maneuvers actually wait did i miss something okay so i don't think i see the maneuvers maybe it's not shared with me actually but i do have one um i do have one of the maneuvers that old man bob actually did send me uh on discord so i'm gonna show it to you guys so one of the maneuvers that he actually sent me was the lotus starfighter which is a uh, given enemy troop can't attack until your next turn and maneuver in response to an enemy troop of flank or fast being played now this is a very cool thing so essentially you can um you can use this uh against um you can use this against the enemy card that is uh basically dropped uh, if somebody drops a raven you can suddenly give it like can't attack but as i understand you will also have to leave uh you will i want there's only one little thing i don't get uh, are you going to have to use energy in order to play that so do you do you need to have like um yeah yeah i remember energy must be spent he said yeah so essentially you need to have some e extra energy left so let's say you know that enemy is going to play raven you leave some three extra energy uh for that specific situation and your opponent also has it gets a chance to guess that since you left three energy uh he should not play raven or you might just play mind games and uh leave free energy and in reality not have this maneuver and your opponent just doesn't play because he thinks you have it so this is like a very very cool um this is like a very very cool um option i really love that part of uh of this because i think it's like super super uh crazy now so what do i think overall about this so first of all i love the vessels i think vessels and their warlords are an amazing touch this an amazing mechanic and really brings up a lot of spice i think i would still go with the biggest one the odysseus class war galley for my warlord i would certainly uh pick either athene or the legendary one and here the way i would actually uh customize this is the following so i would definitely go for the crr bay because as i said the amount of plasma that it can just generate is insane for my armory so drop a uh, drop assault bay imperialist armada breachers and macro cannons right let me check what that is actually i remember uh the breachers uh what was that what was that yeah astropass cavern was pretty good and macro cannons so probably i would go for macro cannons in there for sure and what was in the number one spot officer's command gunnery officer <laughs> what did the gunnery officer do <laughs> it's hard to like remember all of these as i said okay wait a minute no this is not the ship that i would go for let me actually check this yeah retribution class command ship this is what i would go for in this case i would either go for void shield relay or plasma drive just to generate plasma and i would definitely go for flak turrets there uh, if i do remember what was the flak turret because i yeah because i think the flak turrets are just crazy strong man two damage every single every other turn is really sick plus you can generate one plasma from the plasma drives that you can give it and you and with some of the things that reduce the 
a cooldown on that thing is going to be like uh is going to be very very powerful because imagine just every turn you're doing this and for uh the a module grand admiral right no, not the Grand Admiral, uh, Astarte Strike Force, and there was, I think, Gunnery Officer once again, right? So I guess I would go for Gunnery Officer because that's just the main thing, but that doesn't really matter. I would go for this, and with Flak and with Plasma, that would be, like, crazy good. And for my Warlord, I did say what I would go for, and I think one of the main things that I would definitely do here is just build a vehicle build. I think this, uh, this um, expansion... Um, is pretty damn good. It has some very cool mechanics. I think altitude is a very nice mechanic. I think maneuver is a really cool mechanic, though it requires, you know, it requires testing because you never know just how difficult it might be to deal with it. And the whole ship building is just epic. However, uh, there's one problem that I kind of have with this, which is, I think you guys already know what it is, uh, too many fast units in, in, the, in the deck. That's usually not good. There's a reason why fast units keep getting nerfed in Legions, because they're just too toxic, especially when you can uh, get like such high fast units here, like um, less high, high cost ones, like you already have Blue Zephyr, right? And it's possible to still get the Interceptors, you already have the Fury Interceptors, so... There's just too much. So I think you can just take out the enemy Warlord in seconds towards the late game when you have this. Other than that, it's a pretty cool design. I really like it. It seems like super fun. And I would definitely like to see something like this in the game. There was a lot of effort put into this. And I think it's a really, really cool idea overall. So guys, please leave a comment and tell me what you think about this. And yeah, thanks once again for watching and thank you old, old man bob for the opportunity to share your cards and i'll see you in the next one guys